Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I painted this old hand. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, doing this freehand, so what I do is put a centre point into the middle of my board and then I put a centre point onto my reference image. It's scaled up to 7 inch b 5 inch. So while you're working from the centre point, it keeps everything sort of scaled up to fit in with that area then. So you're not sort of run out of space, if you know what I mean. So everything's relative from that centre. And I'm using the edges as a guide as well to where things are but basically what I'm doing is just put the big shapes in first and then I'm using angles imaginary angles so I imagine the angles of things and comparing one against the other now the pastel pencil I'm using for the outline is a 708 Carbothello pencil which is a great pencil because it's a similar color tone to the actual pastel matte dark grey I use so if you have to rub it out uh, you can't really see where the mark's been. It's a really great pencil because it's chalky and it easily glides across the the board and you don't need to put a lot of pressure on to get a mark. If you notice I'm holding the pencil quite away from the tip. The reason being because this creates loose marks so it makes it more sort of free-flowing. So I, I suggest doing that. Now I've mentioned in my videos that you squint your eyes to see the values and then you open the eyes to actually see the colour but there's a way of actually seeing the outline as well and you have to go beyond colour and value and just sense the lines so just don't think about the colour at all just really open up and sense where the lines are you see fingers start to look like fingers when you start putting the values and the tones in there but when you do the outline they look a bit weird they don't look like fingers uh, so it's it's different to what you actually usually see it, because when you start putting the shadows on it it gives it form and when you just see the outline of it it looks very very strange so you get used to actually seeing that strange shape so that's how I do it anyway for more in-depth view of how I do the outline, I've got loads of videos in my channel now, so please check those out after the video. I'll leave a link in the description below for you. Right here's the selection of pencils I've chosen for the underdrawing. They're mostly chalky pencils from the Carbothella range and the Contier Paris range. What I do first is use the white and then just Put more pressure on where it's lighter, less pressure where it's mid-tone. And then using the grey of the pastel mat to sort of shine through a little bit. So basically what I'm doing is redrawing the actual outline and shaping it. So this is part of the outline procedure. I'm moving things around now. This underdrawing is just about trying to get all the shapes to feel right. Uh, so I'm just putting basic colours down. So what I'm using is green and red for the shadows and to desaturate the red. For the deeper shadows I'm using dark green and a cold red. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. It's really a great way of keeping loose and all when you're doing these underdrawings. It's it's really nice to have that freedom to just keep playing about, moving colour around without worrying about detail at this stage. Now to sharpen those edges up, I'm just using the same colour as the pastel mat, which is a 706 grey pencil. Because of the unusual shapes as well, it can cause a little bit of tension if you let it, you know, because you overthink what needs to be done. So my approach is to let go of the mind and focus on the heart and just let it happen. The more you can open up and just 
dissolve into the reference image, even at this early stage, and just be one with it, you'll be surprised how it shapes up on its own without your interference, really. Here's a little real time for you so you can see how I'm putting the wrinkles in there. It's just a matter of mapping it out with the white first, then what I do is just glaze over the top. But like I say, this is just an underdrawing anyway, it's just getting the basic sort of placement of all these elements, making sure the drawing is correct before I start putting the richer colours on. So it's, it's feeling your way through. Try and do as, as, as similar as what you can to actually the reference image. This will help you to keep relaxed as well because if you keep to the similar sort of pattern of things you don't get lost in it because uh, you can be too loose and get too random with these marks. Um, so that's what I tend to do. Uh, keep it sort of relaxed but try and be as accurate as you can but don't go too over the top with the details. Just speeding this up now so it gives me more time to discuss how I do the rich colours and the details. But just enjoy this part, just relax, flow with it and just let it just come together naturally by itself without you trying to force it too much. These two pencils are the pink mix and the white from the Karen Dash range and these are the colours what I've already used in the previous underdrawing. So I'll be using a combination of the two. Now I love the Karen Dash for the rich vibrancy of the pencils and what's great about these pencils is that you can slightly and still lightly put loose marks in but it actually puts more pigment down. Now if I tried to do this with the Carbothello it would put too much pigment down and then it would create problems later when I try and put the details on because it creates too much of a chalky surface. But because this clings to it, it creates the texture I'm looking for and it creates that freshness so when I do glaze over the top that white shines through. And I just repeat this process right through the skin tones just using that white as an under, underneath white or the pink mix and then just mix these different shades on the top which shine through that white. just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for the wonderful support every month by pledging. I really appreciate it. It does really help with producing these videos for you all. Uh, if you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check the link in the description below for more details. This is still a blocking stage but it's more richer colour so what I'm focusing on here is trying to get the values and the chroma correct. So I'm squinting my eyes to see the values and then open my eyes to see the colour. So it's sort of switching from one to the other. And then what you're doing is comparing one area with the other area to get a balance. Here's a little bit of real time just to show you how I'm still mapping out some details as well. So for these sort of little creases in the finger there, I'm using red, then a dark green, which creates a natural shadow of skin tone. So using the green and then just putting a little bit of red on just makes all the difference. Creates a natural look rather than using like a black or something like that or brown. At this point I decided to put a little bit of a background in there just to give me an idea then of trying to get the values correct. Uh, just a little bit of splash of colour because it's only a sketch, it's only a sort of um, a study. So. I didn't want to go over the top with the background, uh, but just enough just to give me an idea of the actual colour tones and that, just to help balance things up. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. Now just to talk a bit about awareness and how that plays a part in my technique because it's being aware 
of the whole thing. Now, if you try and think about something, you only think about one thing at a time, but you can be aware of many things. So it's, it's going beyond thought and coming from a place of awareness or the observer. So you're actually seeing the whole thing, the colours, you're seeing the tones, the, the chroma all together, rather than trying to focus on one point. So that's what I'm doing, is spreading my awareness around all, always. And that's why I'm keeping my image small enough so I can see the whole thing as well. And then just get a balance for how it feels, how it looks, the energy of it. Uh, all these elements just flow through you and out your hands if you just relax and let go of thinking too much about it. Just slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I'm using the red and the green to create a desaturated look because it's like a greyish um, sort of reddish colour skin and to create greys or to, is, is to use the complementary colour so when you're using red you use green it creates a desaturated red and it creates a natural sort of tone to it or a natural grey to it so it's, it, it creates that subtlety because if you just put red on its own it looks too bright and brash but if you add the complementary colour it just softens it all down and desaturates it and that's what you really need when you're doing these old, this old skin is to use that combination. I tried using grey but it, it just don't work sometimes. I think if you try and keep the colours the same and just it's a variation of different um, mixture of more green or more red so you're getting subtleties of areas that's got a little bit more green in it a little bit more red so that's what creates that sort of texture what makes it look interesting and alive just slowing it down now so you can see how i'm putting the details in and i'm enriching the colors up by glazing over that now so now i've done the basic sort of rich colors underneath uh, getting the some idea of value but now I need to sort of warm it up in certain areas so what I'm doing now is glazing with a bit of lemon yellow here and there to create chroma in certain places and but basically going over what I've done but very very lightly glazing with these different colors to create more of a color harmony and, and just warm it up slightly because it looks a little bit too grey, so I needed to sort of just warm it up a little bit by putting a bit of yellow ochre in places and that warm red and just going over it with it really. And, and then you can just touch it up again with a little bit of pink mix and then glaze over again in certain areas. Now you're not pressing on it at all with this pencil, you're just scraping it across the top very lightly. So I suggest holding the pencil really at a distance from the point to keep it really loose and all you're doing is just the weight of the tip of the pencil is just scraping across the top and it's creating a, a, like a glaze and you might think oh there's not enough pencil there for it to be light fast but I've got pieces of work which are 30 40 year old and they're still as fresh as when I did them all them years ago so I've got confidence with this method Now for this area which is a little bit more richer in the actual reference image I've used a Caran d'Ache yellow ochre which is more richer in pigment and again I'm using it very very lightly just scraping it across the top you notice it's not moving any of the detail underneath uh, so it's very very lightly put on but you can see the difference in the colour change and also I'm using from Caran d'Ache is the warm red which is the vermilion which a combination of vermilion and yellow ochre is an amazing flesh colour to tone to use so um, that's what I've done in this area just to actually warm it up a little now for the subtle details I'm using the pink mix colour and just slightly scraping it again across the surface making sure that tip is actually sharp I use a knife to sharpen the pencils and just here and there just putting that little bit of a stroke 
just makes a difference. You don't have to, like I say, you don't have to do it in exactly the same, but as close as you can get to it. But I'm using the cold green here to create them sort of shadow areas and then just mix a bit of warm red with it so sometimes with the shadows you need a cold red and a cold green sometimes a cold green and a, a warm red and even a warm green and a cold red sometimes makes different shadows so it's a case of actually trying these different combinations of pencils to see what works Now for the watch, uh, my technique is quite suggestive, it's not really detailed, I like to just put a, a mark here and there, and when you look at it from a distance, it looks quite detailed, I mean, really I'm videoing this and it's quite close up, but if you saw this from a distance, it looks a lot more realistic, um, but just to show you on the video, it's just a suggestion here and there. And you don't really want it too detailed or it will take the eye off the hand and that's the main focus point. So here's another look, a real time view of how I'm doing the final touches. What I'm doing is varying the pressure putting more pressure where it's darker, less where it's lighter, same with the white and every other colour. Um, sometimes I'm just like tapping the colour in, sometimes I stroke it, and then sometimes I glaze as well. So it's a combination of all those different techniques that creates the subtle feeling and texture of the skin. And it's a case of just letting go and just feeling it and being suggestive with the marks and it's all about expression rather than detail. It's more expressionistic my uh, technique is rather than a detailed hyper realistic look. It's try to get realism through just subtle marks here and there. Hope you've enjoyed this study of an old hand. Now I've got loads of different studies in my channel, so be sure to check that out if you're interested and want to see more. Is the study at the correct angle rather than being in perspective on the easel? If you're interested in seeing more of my work, here's a few links for you to check out. Take care.